What's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're in, and girls, sorry, sorry, guys and girls. Today we're answering your questions. I recently answered a question about, do players hope that their teammates fail when they're in the minor leagues because they want to get called up instead of them? Um, so if you haven't seen that video, you can go check that out. But today's video is a little bit different. Today's video is, when you're in the minor leagues, do you hope the major league players fail? So if you're a shortstop, are you watching the major league team and hoping that the shortstop hits you know, 125 so that they stink and get sent down or get released and you get called up? That's what we're gonna get into today, all right? I've got some specific examples of this and I'll give you kind of my thought process, okay? Let's start out with me first and then I'll give you a funny example the first time I ever saw this. But for me, when I'm watching the major league team play, I'm not cheering for the, all right, I'm a second baseman. I'm not cheering for our second baseman, okay? Now I'm not saying that I hope the guy goes out and breaks his leg. We'll talk about those stories in a second. But when I'm competing, right, when I'm in AAA or AA and I'm watching, you know, Tadahito Gucci or I'm watching David Eckstein, who's a great guy, okay? I, I got to be around David Eckstein in spring training, like, seemed like a, uh, a fantastic young man. He was not a young man at that time. He was an older man. He was a veteran player, okay? Great, great guy, super hard worker. Learned a lot watching him go about his business. But when he was playing, when I was in the minor leagues and I'm looking at the box scores, like, do you think that I'm opening up that box score saying, I hope David went four for four with four homers tonight? I mean, he's probably not going to do that. He's kind of a smaller guy. But do you think that I'm hoping that? I mean, I'd be like Mother Teresa if I was doing that. I'm not doing that. No, I want to go to the major leagues. You want to, you think I want to spend the rest of my life in AAA eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? By that time, you're not really eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches anymore. But depending on where you're playing, like, do you think that I want to go take a 10 hour bus ride? Do you think I want to take a connecting flight? Do you think I want to go play in some town you've never heard of instead of going and playing at Fenway Park? No, I don't. I want to go play at Fenway Park, okay? So I'm not opening up the box score and saying, I hope David really did well tonight. Like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm open it up and I'm saying, I kind of hope David went over for what 4K. Sorry about that. But that's just the way it is. If you're a minor league player in the comment section below, like do you look at if you if you're a start if you're a center fielder trying to get to the big leagues, now Mike Trout, he's doing awesome regardless. But let's just say they've got like some fringe center fringe major league starter in center field. Are you opening up the box score and hoping that he went like three for four with two doubles and a, a ding dong that night? Like, no, I don't think anybody's doing that. So I would check a lot. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sitting there like, again, I didn't have like a, a little, what are those, voodoo dolls or whatever, you, you know, putting, p p p pressing pins in there and, and hoping that they get injured. I'm not doing that, but I'm not hoping that they do well, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Now, here's the first example that I kind of saw of this. I was a college player at Wake Forest, and I knew a, I knew a minor league player and went and watched, watched them play, and then up hanging out with him and a couple of the other minor league guys on his team. We were back at their hotel watching TV, and the major league team was on TV. And this is the first time we're sitting there, and we're watching the game, and the, and the team was literally, they were praying for injuries. Like a guy would go, like slide into a base, and they'd be like, break your leg, like, <laughs> like cheering for broken legs, for sprained ankles, for not for concussions, because nobody talked about concussions back then. But like, they were literally watching the game, hoping that somebody got injured, because it meant that they might get called up, or at least maybe they move up a level, because if the big league guy gets injured and they call the AAA guy up, well then the guy from AA might have to go to AAA, right? So that was the first time that I was like, wow, because you don't really realize this. You're like, these guys are all part of the same organization. When the game was on, I thought everyone was going to be like cheering super hard for the team and all the players, right? Like, they're in the minor leagues. They couldn't be further away from the big league team. At this point, they didn't know anyone even in the big leagues. So they're hoping for just anything bad to happen to the team so they can get called up. Now, was every player like that? I don't know. I'm sure some guys were like, yeah. you know, they play in the Red Sox minor leagues. Like, woo, go Red Sox. You know, I, I don't think that probably happened a ton. Um, but I'm sure there were some players that did it. So I would say typically nobody's cheering for, especially players at their position, to do well, now, are you cheering for the team to win or lose? You know, that's an interesting one because let's start off with this. 
When you're in the minor leagues, you know you're in the minor leagues, you feel pretty disconnected from the major league team, unless you're in like the high minor leagues where maybe you were in big league spring training or maybe you're in the, on the 40 man, so you've got a little bit closer with those big leaguers. But a lot of guys in the minor leagues, like a lot of guys, they don't even know the guys in the big leagues. I mean, they've watched them on TV, but it's not like they're friends with them or buddies with them or anything, right? So it's like, you don't even really know those guys very much. So yeah, you might be with the Orioles, right? And so you can say you're with the Baltimore Orioles, but let's be, Let's be honest. You're you're not on the Orioles. You're you're in some like I don't even remember. I played in Norfolk, uh, Virginia. I don't even know what levels are beneath that. Um, but let's say with the Padres, okay? Let's switch that example because I played with the Padres. When I'm in Eugene, Oregon, like I am so far away from San Diego that I I don't I could care less. I don't know anybody. Like I don't even feel like I'm part of the organization. Like yeah, I'm a Padre, but like I'm a Eugene Emerald. I'm way down here. I, I'm a, there's 652 levels away from the major leagues. Okay, so I don't know these guys at all. So do you want them to win? This was my experience. As you get when you're when you're in the low minor leagues. Yeah, you probably watch. You're like, I just got drafted by the Padres. Like, go Padres. Woohoo, I got my foam finger. Yay, you know, whatever. When you get older, you get to you get to the higher parts of the, of the minor leagues and you really, really want to get called up. I would say usually more players are going to get called up when the team doesn't do well. For example, when I got called up, hell, our whole AAA team got called up. You know why? Because the major league team was in last place. We stunk. So they just started calling up a ton of guys. So, you know, when, when rosters get expanded late in the season, if your team's in a, in a playoff race, right, and, you're, and it's tight, like they're probably not going to call up as many guys. But if your team's like in last place like we were, now they can experiment more. They can say, hey, let's call up, you know, maybe you call up a few more guys. Let's give them a shot. Let's get them in the lineup. Let's see what they can do. So there's more opportunity for you if your team isn't doing well. So um, I don't know if I was actively like cheering for the team to lose, but I do know after seeing how it played out that more guys got an opportunity with the Padres that year to show what they could do at the big leagues because the team was really bad, right? And you've got to, listen, there's a lot of good players that just never get an opportunity to get to the big leagues. And so you need an opportunity to get there, right? How can you get there? And then you can show what you can do, right? And so that gave me an opportunity to get there. And I didn't do well while I was there, but it gave me an opportunity and it gave other players an opportunity because the team wasn't doing very well. And if you look around our big league roster or our big league team, late that season. I mean, there were a lot of AAA guys. It was, all, it was me and all my buddies that I played with and kind of came up through the minors with. I'm making it sound like they brought everybody up. You can't bring everybody up, okay? You got to be on the 40, man. So there's, it's not like you can just call everyone up. But there were a lot of guys that got called up that year. Much more, that I would think, than in a, than a typical season, especially if your team's doing really well. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into what you're thinking as a minor league player when it comes to players at your position and then your organization in general. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're going to show you exactly step by step how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.